Oh, sorry. Sorry about sneezing in the open air. Apologies if that's triggering. It's so nice to work alone. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to my cave. Adam Savage here. And uh, behold the colander. Um, Julia Child was once asked, famous chef, famous DIY home, not home taught, she's Cordon Bleu. Famous chef, Julia Child. I, she doesn't need any qualifiers. Julia Child was once asked, I don't know why I think she needs qualifiers. Julia Child was once asked, uh, what is the most important kitchen tool in your kitchen? And she said the colander. And I've spent like 20 years thinking about that answer because it just speaks to a specific, that answer is always going to encompass someone's philosophy of kitchen word, right? What is the most important? For instance, for me, weirdly, it might be tongs of like the thing I go to more than any other. Um, and, you know, the colander is good for separating and for blanching and for washing and for, right? There's all these things. I'm just fascinated that it was Julia Child. Like, and I could be wrong. This quote could be wrong. It could have been misattributed. It could have read the wrong article. Anyway, behold the colander, the mighty colander. And absolutely, no matter what Julia Child thought of it, an indispensable kitchen tool. And this is my son, Thing Two's house colander. And it had um, some feet on it which is fine, the feet, it had this, it had a ring. And that ring was um, welded, it looks like, yeah. Welded, you can see the scorch marks here on the stainless steel. Um, it was welded to that and said weld has weld, weld, said weld, said weld has failed. Said weld has failed. Yeah, I set myself up for a tough tongue twister there this has failed. It's fallen off. And I am going to put it back on. I'm going to modify this slightly. I'm going to add four copper rivets to this. Not steel because it would rust. Not aluminum because I don't want to eat. I don't want them eating food in aluminum. Copper should be fine. And there's a thing about this. When I do this, I'm going to add, there's going to be four rivets in here. And that's a tricky thing with food stuff. They're just going to have to clean around it. I'll explain that to them. If they don't feel comfortable with it, they can drill it out and use the colander for the rest of their lives in this configuration without the feet. But I'm going to modify this so that I can put four rivets in and hold it down to this, if that is in fact what they would like. And then I will give that to them. This is when I say them, I'm talking about my son and his uh, partner who he lives with. Uh, this is their colander. And by the end of this video, I will have fixed it for them. Let's get started. So here's the colander, and you can see the four spots that it was welded on. They are cardinal. Uh, and here is the foot piece. It has this lip, but it's, it's um, relieved here so that thing, water can't stay in there. Boy, they didn't do a lot of work to get rid of the burr on that. Um, so I'm going to take this onto a scotch Bright wheel and soften that and soften that and also take down some of the rough patches here because I can feel where the, let's see this, right? Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. Then we'll get to the mod. And here's what the mod is actually going to end up being. I want tabs on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, uh, I'm gonna come in uh, slightly less than half an inch and I'm gonna draw a line all the way around. Oh, that wasn't quite the line I wanted it to be. Um, I'm going to start this again. Rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol, the most spectacular way to get rid of uh, oil-based markers. I mean, uh, alcohol-based markers. There we go. All right. That's a clean surface. Hang on. 
All right, I've spread, sprayed red marking fluid on this. It's really good stuff because you can just like scratch through it with your fingernail. Uh, I'm going to use this to create my mark. I think it's going to be about like that. Yeah. Let's do 0.3 inches. Great. So here's what we'll do. We'll just... There we go. So now it has this ring all the way around and I am going to, there we go. So we are going to make a mark. Oh, is that not gonna work? That's not necessarily gonna work, but actually it's gonna be fine. Uh, so I'm gonna make a mark at the, at the bottom of each one of these.
Okay, so uh, what, what I've done here, now it's pretty obvious, I have made four holes and I've cut away the rest of this lip so that these may bend out and properly rivet to the bottom of this. Now, I was just talking to someone who works in industry and they were working on some food safe machines. And it actually turns out that there's a whole thing about rivets being where food touches because it's hard to clean around them. So I'm just gonna let my son and his partner know that I'm using copper rivets so that they won't be poisonous, but that uh, they may have to do some extra care cleaning this. And again, if they don't like it, they can drill this out and they just end up with a colander with four more holes here, that's it. We are almost done with this. Yeah, it's a very, very quick and dirty, quick and dirty. Uh, yeah, I use the um, YouTube's favorite metalworking tool, the cutoff wheel, uh, and my favorite finishing tool, the flap wheel. DeWalt takes good care of me. I just mean they make good stuff. Um, all right, let's get to marking and drilling. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna clean up the bottom of this and get rid of some of those artifacts. All right. I'm... So we are finished. Uh, I've made the rivets all smooth inside and I will recommend that my son and his partner clean really well when they clean that. Uh, these have all been softened and the burr inside here has been cleaned up. So it's a little better than it was before. And I know, I know food safe stuff, not really, uh, I hear your caveats. Uh, I'll give them the choice about whether they want to keep using this uh, Williams-Sonoma uh, colander with its peculiarly angled hole drilling all the way around the perimeter. Uh-huh. Makes one curious. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this quick and dirty uh, household to-do list build, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers. Thank you for watching that video. If you're anything like me, you were watching it wondering, Adam, how can I spend more time with my friends in the outdoors under improvisatory and impromptu conditions? And I would counsel you to go to adamsavage.com and buy yourself one of my bedrolls, which will allow you plenty of dry yet comfortable socializing on grass or any other place you find yourself. I've had one of these in the trunk of my car for 25 years. Okay, I haven't been making these for 25 years. It was somebody else's until I made my own. Okay, adamsavage.com, I'll see you there.